Fall Foulage, a painting by Del Rosa. So this painting was inspired by several photographs that were taken of my front yard in Winchester, Kentucky. These photos were taken by my dad, and they turned out really beautiful, some really beautiful fall colors. So we'll look at a few more of these pictures. It was just a gorgeous day with the sun shining on the trees and everything. Across the road, there's a horse paddock where the horses would live and run around, and I had the opportunity to see a lot of those, and I thought, why not combine the two? Why not put some horses in this picture, and we can make a painting out of it? So that was the original inspiration and genesis of this painting. I didn't have any particularly good pictures myself, but now I'm fortunate that I have a friend, Jennifer Johnson, who does equine photography. She was kind enough to let me use some of her photographs as reference material for my painting. So she had these pictures of these two beautiful horses, mare and a foal, together. And I selected from several of these to use for this painting. So here's the concept image. I took the photograph, the background taken by my father, edited out the road and the telephone pole in Photoshop, and then added in these two horses. This is the painting I want to paint. I'm starting with a blank white illustration board. I prime this surface with some white paint, and then I'm ready to proceed with my painting. I'm going to start by adding in the pond surface, since the pond is reflecting the sky. I often want to paint the sky first, since it's usually the thing that's the furthest into the background. I'm going to start adding some of the details around the pond, particularly in the distant background with the hills and stuff. Now I do have the horses masked off, and I took the masking off to take this photograph. The inset picture here shows you the whole picture with the horses and the mask in place. I'll be removing this mask in the other photos to come up, just so that we can see the part of the painting that I've actually painted. I don't want the viewer to be confused, because I haven't actually painted the horses yet. This next image, we start to establish a lot of the deep black shapes in this painting. These are useful to me. They serve as a guide. They're kind of like signposts that tell me where I'm at in the painting. So I definitely want to put these in early. I've cut out a stencil from another piece of paper with the picture printed on it. And this helps me to get these black shapes in the exact right places. After this, I'm going to start adding in a little more of the details especially some of the darker green leaves, now that I kind of know where they go, and fill in some of the darker regions. It's easy to paint the dark stuff first. Then we'll do more of the mid-greens, kind of filling up the background here. You can see I'm starting to put some of the shadows on the ground around the horses, got some of the browns on the trees. Now we're doing more of the browns up into the leaves, the or deep, deep kind of desaturated oranges. Not really the pretty leaves, these are the background leaves. And then we finish up the grass around the horses, some of the leaf litter that's on the ground there around them, and we continue to tweak and refine the leaves up in the trees. So we just keep tweaking things. It's a little bit further back picture. You can see this is sitting on my easel. You can also see clearly in this picture that I'm not painting on the whole surface of my illustration board. There is a band about an inch wide on either side where I'm able to overpaint past the edge of the board. I'll trim that later to give myself a nice, clean, crisp edge at the end of the painting. And now it's time to paint some horses. So I've dropped in some of the browns to match up with the horses. I'm going to paint these horses darker than the original horses because I think the weight of the horse better balances the painting. And so here it is with the horses in place and all the foliage around it. So this is not the masking, this is the actual horses that I have painted. Now we're going to start putting the yellow leaves up in the trees. Meanwhile, I have masked off with another image the whole bottom half of this painting to keep from accidentally spilling paint on it. In the meanwhile, then I can work on the yellow leaves up in the trees without worry about damaging the painting below the yellow leaves complete, we can begin working on the red leaves. Here you can see I have some of the masking tape on there. You can see some of the masking around the edges of the painting, as well as the edge, that band at the edge of the painting that I was talking about earlier. 
So I'm just starting to try to establish some of these red leaves, particularly the more transparent ones, and filling in some of these locations. Now to do a lot of these leaves, I created a stencil. I created this stencil in Blender by taking a leaf, maple leaf shape, and rotating it on two different axes. I made a whole bunch of copies of this and then took a picture of it. This gave me an image of maple leaves, basically, in a whole bunch of different rotated positions. And I could cut each one of those out, and that made a little bitty stencil then that I could use with my airbrush to drop in a lot of these different leaves. Instead of having to try to make a custom stencil for every leaf shape, I had a whole bunch of generic ones that I could use. Working more and more on those red leaves, you can see there's an image of the original picture in the top of this picture. I think I had that right. Nope, the top of the picture is the painting, and then the bottom down there below is the photo reference that I'm working from. So I'm trying to get to have a lot of these shadows and reflections on all these leaves. So these are the purples and some of the white glints that you see on the leaves. To give them that depth, that sense of depth and fluttering about in the wind. So here it is, all finished. Time to sign. I put my little signature on there, and it's looking great. And we'll crop out the ends there in the final image, and here it is, the finished painting. Fall foulage. This was a lot of fun, and it brings back a lot of memories of my home in Winchester. If you have any comments or questions that things you might like to see me do in the future, please leave them in the comments below. Always appreciate any feedback you have. Appreciate everybody's attention today. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. 